Welcome to the Zax Roundtable Review, a discussion of current events affecting investors as well as other topics of financial interest featuring the analysts and editors of Zax.com. Well, as we sit here on this March the 15th of 2010, there is yet no March madness in the stock market, although the markets ended four of the last five weeks higher. Our panelists will weigh in on both the bull and the bear case for the market. Editor-at-large Steve Reitmeister, Research Director Shiraz Meehan, and Market Technician Kevin Matris. And so, taking into account both of these cases can be a little maddening, especially if you're trying to devise you know, a, a different type of a plan here for your investing. But we'll take them one at a time. Kevin, the case for the market to go higher. Do you see one, especially on a technical level? Well, yeah. I mean, if you look at it technically, the market has been able to really keep itself together in these higher levels. We broke down to, uh, to 10,000, uh, I think, a month or two ago. We zipped right back up to 10.5, 10.6. And as I said before, the longer you can create a base at these higher levels, that shows the market is accepting these prices. And uh, I think the market, since it seemingly is unable to go down on these negative economic news, I think the moment we can start seeing a little bit more positivity, and as long as the base can continue to go sideways and keep itself together, I think the market feels like it, it wants to break out to the upside. So I don't think it's going to happen right away, but I do see a lot of good things in store for the market to break through this trading range. Seems like we were saying that, Steve, back in February, too. The market wants desperately to break out, but yet we're still hanging around that 10,000 range. Well, I mean, but actually we're, we're hanging out much closer to the previous highs of 10.7, right. Mr. Negativity. So, <laughs> so, you know, but the, you know, to throw in for the case for the market to go higher, I mean, the, the economy does continue to, to rebound, uh, and that pulls up uh, corporate earnings, and the higher corporate earnings are, the more attractive stocks are. Then when you compare stocks to the alternatives, uh, whether that be uh, corporate or uh, government bond markets, the, uh, the yields are not that good. Uh, and then you take a look at what we, what we talk about, the earnings yield uh, of the uh, stock market, which is uh, in the high sixes or 7%. Uh, you get a much better rate of return being in the stock market than you would in the bonds right now, which is an attractive pull for uh, investments. So, so there, there's a number of good reasons to, uh, to, to, to realize the market could keep moving higher. Sure, I seems to be looking at you with a skeptical eye when you uh, say that. Is there a bull case here? Uh, there is. Uh, I think, as I, as I mentioned in my, uh, in my weekly commentary last week as well, the, 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 the near-term uncertainties that was weighing on the market from its, uh, from its January highs uh, have been dissipating. So uh, there's more on balance positive sentiment uh, about the market uh, than, there is, uh, than there is negative. So the, uh, I think the, uh, the balance is more towards the upside, not a substantial one, not a clear-cut breakout one, but definitely on balance, uh, it, it, it's positive. Steve, case for the market to go lower, because you yeah. have to look at both sides. Right, here. right. You've got to weigh out the pros and cons, and you know, in, in the negative column, uh, is, you know, right now there is no signs of a double dip. Obviously, those started to happen. That would be a, a clear case. But, um, you know, there, there's still a lot of talk about this just being an inventory <coughs> readjustment. You see some of the economic indicators kind of stalling out, meaning they're not necessarily going down necessarily, but not really continuing th their rise. Uh, still, and when you have unemployment so high and it just keeps not getting better, you know, right. and everyone's like, well, that's the last piece of the puzzle. Well, if that last piece doesn't come in, then it, it, it pulls into question, you know, how strong is this economy and, and what will future uh, GDP and corporate earnings numbers look like? Right. And so that, that would be the case for, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily say a bearish case in the market, but that's kind of like the, the market stall out case. Yeah. Kevin? You know, the, the interesting thing is that every time you see the market pull back, you don't see people panicky, uh, you know, hoping to get out because they, they don't think they're going to be able to sell it at a better price. You see a lot of people anxious to, to buy stocks, selective stocks, at lower prices. So it seems as if people are really, really anxious to buy on these dips. And that is why I can create a case for a series of higher lows, which goes into the whole idea that we are building a nice bullish base. The only negative that I see is, you know, I keep reading these things on China where they are really trying to prevent a bubble. You know, they're talking about potentially um, disallowing some of those guarantees, loan guarantees that some of the local governments had made, uh, bypassing some of the rules that China had set forth. 
And they haven't made an announcement yet, but there is expectation that they will make an announcement. They're, they're going to be banning some types of loans from local government. So mm -hmm. if they are really, really worried that they are creating a bubble, normally once you think that you've got a bubble on your hands, you probably do have a bubble on your hands. I don't think this is going to derail China's economy in any way, but they have been the leader for the world's economic recovery. And if they have a hiccup, that could pose a problem. But I don't see anything major happening just yet. Shiraz, is China still the wild card? Is is that still what may make the market move lower here? China definitely is a wild card, and uh, the what, what what Kevin referred to as uh, their their hope and their goal to rein in and remove some of those speculative excesses while keeping the broader economy intact. That's 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 a good goal, uh, a desirable goal, mm -hmm. but very difficult to achieve. Right. I'll add to the China question. Uh, some issues on the domestic front here, particularly related to Fed, uh, how they will be removing some of those stimulative measures. Uh, I'll, I'll zero in particularly on the housing sector. Uh, the Fed had been buying these mortgage-based securities. They have already choreographed that they will stop buying those at the end of March. Where would uh, uh, the long-term mortgage rates be without the Fed? Uh, making additional purchases off those. We have seen some stabilization in the U.S. housing market. Will that stabilization remain in place uh, as the Fed uh, stops those purchases and maybe even starts eventually offloading some of those securities from its balance sheet? Yeah, so that's all an interesting additional. questions. But let's go right down the line quickly. What do you believe in, the bull or the bear case? I think the bullish case, modestly bullish case, is, is stronger than the bearish case right now. Shiraz, what do you think? I would agree. I would say the overall tone in the market is towards the, the positive and the upside. Kevin? Um, <laughs> I'm bullish. <laughs> bullish? Bullish. I believe in the bull case. Long term? All long term bulls or, or short term bulls? Well, the short term, that, that's that's a coin flip. You know, what's right. the market going to do tomorrow, next week, and so on and so forth. You know, taking a look out over the course of the year, uh, the, the general uh, improvement of the economy, odds are the market should be neutral to higher than it is now. Right. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad we all agreed on that. <laughs> that's the latest thinking from here with all of the participants. I'm Terry Ruffalo.